The beef shortage crisis here in the United States is getting worse by the day. The prices that we're seeing at the auction houses for live head of cattle uh, are at record highs now. The prices that you're seeing at your stores are not yet at all-time record highs, but they're getting close. And soon, they will push past the record highs. And we've been warning about this and warning about this and warning about this. And it's not just that uh, there's a shortage of cattle right now, which is going to take years for it to clear. But in addition to that, we have the U.S. federal government and some states going there and trying to push us off the cliff because they hate cow farts that much. Now the state of New York has decided to sue JBS, one of the largest um, beef uh, production companies out there. Uh, they, they're one of the biggest processing plants. Um, they have uh, f- meat processing plants all over the United States. JBS, a massive, colossal um Now, you may not like all their processes, and you may not like uh, what kind of beef they produce and everything like that, but you can't argue with the fact that this is a powerhouse inside uh, the beef industry. And the state of New York is now suing them. Why? Do they do something health-wise? Nope. They do not have a viable plan to get to net zero emissions by 2040. And you may say, did, did, did JBS have a legal obligation to get to, uh, you know, net zero emissions by 2040? According to the state of New York, yes, they do. And that is why they are suing JBS. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about beef prices. We're going to talk um, a bit about what you can do about this. If you haven't fully gotten stocked up or if you want to get a little more stocked up, we're going to talk about some things you can do, uh, different price uh, ranges, uh, the cheapest things you can do, the, 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 the more premium options of what you can do, uh, stuff in the middle. We're going to talk about all of that and more. Let's jump into it. Welcome to the Poplar Report. I'm Steve Poplar. I'm an accountant by trade, and we're covering the stories that the media just kind of brushes under the rug. Uh, so we go and we pull that rug up and keep you as informed as possible. Much of the reports on this channel, of course, come from you guys. Uh, we have a, an extensive network of viewers from all over sharing different things. This video is going to be focusing in on the beef crisis, right? So right now, if you if you got your uh, your your head of beef, <laughs> you get, get one or two or five head of beef, and you're like, hey, let's let's uh, let's sell these. If you have feeder steer feeder, uh, feeder steers, uh, you are looking at 10% higher prices than last year. Now that may not sound like a whole lot to non-farmer insiders, but ranchers, uh, that's that's really good. If it weren't for the cost of all the feed that has gone through the roof, right? Uh, the cost of getting that uh, that steer to the uh, to the auction is. Uh, has gone up dramatically over the past year, but getting 10% more uh, price-wise is, that's a healthy increase. And if it's 10% more there, uh, then it goes up even more once the, uh, the steers are fed and fattened up for slaughter. Uh, we're, we're looking at all those prices just get passed on down the line, which is why we're gonna be seeing a dramatically higher price uh, at the store for beef. Fresh beef is going to be the highest, um, and there's different qualities of beef, right? If you go and you want to get a steak, you're, you're generally speaking not eating like an old milk cow, okay? Old milk cows get turned into ground beef. I'm, I'm spilling the milk here, okay? But uh, th- that's what happens, okay? The, the, the lower quality cows that aren't really being raised as beef cows, they're going to have tougher meat and stuff like that, they get turned into ground beef. If you want steaks, if you want uh, chunks of beef, uh, if you want cubed meat and all that kind of stuff like that, you're going to be looking at Angus or other breeds that are bred for for meat, right? Uh, Cows uh, for milk, milk cows, they're not being raised for meat. So let's just talk about the meat side of things, right? Uh, If you want actual beef, and not just ground beef and tough cuts or whatever, um, you're, you're seeing that the beef herd 
here in the United States is right now at a 73 year low. So the, the cattle being raised exclusively for beef, 73 year low cattle herd. The cattle, um, total cattle, including milk cows and everything, is down 2% as compared to last year. And last year it was low. Um, so we have, uh, after low year, after low year, after low year, it keeps plummeting. Now, you may be like, well, 2% doesn't sound so bad. Friends, we had about a 6% drop in uh, hens in the United States back when we had that egg crisis, about a 6% drop in hens in the United States. And we had Eggmageddon, right? <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's crazy, but when you take a certain percentage off, prices start spiraling upwards until people stop buying it. What 2% of the U.S. population is going to stop eating beef this year? Uh, probably none. Um, so everyone's going to cut back maybe a little bit as prices go up, right? And that's really where we're going to be looking at is everybody cutting back some of the beef that they eat this coming year. But like I said, it's not just that we're, our cattle herd are down 2% right now, but the fact is that the cattle herd is at uh, historic lows, yet we have higher population. We have all these new people coming into the country and they want to eat beef too. And when they go to the store and they buy their beef, so who's going to stop eating beef? You say, well, maybe we'll import it from other countries. Well, we're not going to be importing it from other countries. Why? Uh, Brazil is one of the largest cat, uh, beef producing countries in the world. Their, all their beef is going to China. When you look at Brazil, Argentina, um, all their beef is heading over to China. China has been having some serious issues with their cattle um, and just the meat in general over there. And so they are importing a lot more meat. Every year it's going up by a large percentage of, of the, uh, the imports of beef and they're stocking up on beef too. They see the crisis coming and they've been just sucking up beef. The United States exports of beef have dropped dramatically, but the imports of beef have not gone up. We aren't able to really import all that much. Now, there's certain kinds like the corned beef uh, in the cans. That gets imported, okay? I, I get that. So, we have the New York uh, Attorney General suing JBS at the same time that we have historic low cattle um, numbers in the U.S., which means uh, our our costs are going up. So um, I, I talked to you about feeder steers, and you're like, well, what about the milk cows? What about the milk cows that are past their prime that they're getting thrown into the ground chucker? <laughs> they're going they're thrown into the meat grinder, <laughs> literally, right? Utility cows, which is basically what that is, uh, it's going to turn, get turned into ground beef, 16% higher prices than last year. People are moving from steaks and that, and they're moving over to cheaper cuts like ground beef, and that's natural. You, you still want your beef, but you're willing to take a, a lower quality beef. But prices on the lower quality beef are up even more. So we have low cattle costs, uh, low, low cattle numbers. And what can we do about this? Um, as you know, if you put beef out on the counter, it's uh, going to go bad. And if you know anything else, you also know that if you take beef and you stick it in your freezer, it eventually goes bad too. Have you ever gotten one of those freezers out of the, uh, steaks out of the freezer that uh, has been there a little bit too long? You're like, this doesn't taste so good. <laughs> you can stick it in the freezer for a while, but you're going to need to do something uh, beyond that. So what options do you really have? The cheapest option and the, and the most viable option for a lot of people is uh, just what the, the, the globalists want, which is you just substitute. You eat something else. And one of the things that you can eat uh, that's uh, protein and everything like that are eggs. Now you can raise your own eggs where you are, um, or you can um, you can get you can freeze dry eggs, right? You can get your own eggs and you can freeze dry them yourself. If you have a freeze dryer, um, I don't. I'm not a rich person, so uh, <laughs> I don't have a Harvest Right freeze dryer. You know, some some people have those things. Uh, uh, looks like fun, uh, but looks really really expensive too. Uh, this I actually ordered this. Um, this came out to being about, uh, this is two dozen, 
eggs in, a, in this jar. Uh, and it ended up being like about $5 a dozen uh, for freeze dried in a jar. So two dozen eggs there is pro probably about 10 bucks for this jar. Um, this was, I got this off Etsy. Now the Etsy seller I got from, they, uh, I wiped them out. <laughs> I, I got, I got four jars. I got eight dozen eggs from them. Um, but, uh, freeze dried eggs is, is one way to go. You can freeze eggs. Once again, you're going to run into that issue of, uh, you, you can only store things in the freezer for so long. Now I know, I know you, you can store it forever, but quality does go down and we all get that. Um, and, and especially if you're, you're storing like, uh, better cuts of meat and stuff like that. Anyway, um, another option is, um, beef jerky, but then again, that's, that's short term as well. You're looking at maybe two years, uh, for beef jerky and it's usually very salty. You can only use it for so much. Um, I got a bunch of beef jerky myself because I like beef jerky. And in addition to that, uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, it stores, it's, it's shelf stable for a while. Um, but then eventually it starts kind of going a little off. But, um, the next thing up, you can up the ladder is you can get like Keystone, this is ground beef. Uh, ground beef is about a buck cheaper per can, which is why I get that. Um, they also have the, the beef shred or the beef, um, they just call it beef. Um, and that's about a dollar more. Uh, this is about, it's about four fifty a pound, uh, but it's in a can already pre-cooked. So, um, you say, Steve, uh, that's 28 ounces. That's not quite, uh, 32 ounces. Well, when you cook beef, you lose some, you know, you lose some weight, right? It, 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 it loses weight, uh, when you cook it down. And, uh, so this is the equivalent of two pounds of ground beef cooked. So that makes sense there. Um, you're looking at 450 a pound, um, which if you're, if you're not really into spending all the time and, uh, canning it yourself, uh, you'd have to pay for the jars and you know, that kind of thing. Uh, these things should last relatively indefinitely. The quality will slowly go down very, very slowly. Uh, but generally you won't have too much, um, you'll lose some texture. The texture will be a little weird when you open up, but these cans, whenever you open them up, they look kind of, kind of nasty anyway. Um, no matter what you do with them, but once you cook it up, once you heat it up, it looks a lot better. Then in addition to that, if you want to combine, um, things like freeze dried with beef. Um, so canned beef is, is good for what it is. Um, but obviously the ultimate is <laughs> I'm, I'm attacking myself with this, uh, is freeze dried. This is a, this is spaghetti with meat sauce. Um, this doesn't really have all that much meat in it. Um, but, uh, you know, if you know at all freeze dried, once you start getting into that, it gets a little more pricey. Um, it's fantastic. It's super awesome. You just pour some boiling water in one of these meals. Um, actually, they have the deal right now where it's uh, uh, two of these for $10.50. Normally, these are like uh, $10 a piece, $9 to $10 a piece, but you can get these for $5 a piece. I'll put the link down below um, in the pinned comment, but um, that's not me, right? That's That's mostly like noodles and whatever. These are fun and, and they taste good, but uh, uh, that's not a, a great option uh, for, for those kind of meals. But when we start looking at freeze dried beef, uh, you, you're looking at uh, quality levels, right? You have your, your beef crumbles, uh, which is like basically ground beef. They, they call it uh, ground beef crumbles. And it's, it's, it's um, you know, it reconstitutes almost like ground beef. And then you have your little beef cubes, your little tiny little beef cubes. And then you have, um, like, uh, what, uh, so that's like mountain house and, um, uh, Nutra store. I think it is, is like the little, little tiny cubes or the beef crumbles. Um, you pay more if it's not the beef crumbles. And then you have like, uh, things like, uh, uh, prepper beef, uh, which is, a uh, uh, if you go to poplarbeef.com, um, they have those there. Um, that's when you start talking about the big chunks or like steak, um, as they say, you know, store steak, not crumbles. Uh, this stuff is fantastic, uh, but it's not for everybody, right? Uh, this is, if you are already a little 
you know, a little along the way, you got some food stored up and you want to add some, some nice food to your thing. Um, and some people actually just eat the, this stuff, uh, generally speaking, um, but they have a lot of sales going on over at uh, poplarbeef.com, um, which actually takes you over to the site. Uh, make sure you use the coupon code CLEANCOWS if you do that. Uh, that takes 15% off the price. And then uh, check out the subscribe option. If you uh, sign up for the subscription uh, option, that uh, that knocks another 10% off, which actually makes it quite affordable. Um, but uh, if you crack up in one of those cans, um, you're looking at little these little tiny cubes. When they say beef chunks or beef cubes, uh, remember that uh, these things expand when they when they get rehydrated. So freeze dried, uh, this will expand some more. Um, every ounce of freeze-dried beef turns into four ounces of reconstituted beef. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind when you see uh, the, the numbers, you're like, this isn't all that much, you know? Um, you know, you get a little package and you're like, it's only like four ounces or something like that. Uh, for This is Mountain House, right? Uh, but uh, it, it reconstitutes into a lot more weight. And when you're talking about uh, beef, uh, you know, uh, one ounce of this uh, turns into four ounces of, of prepared beef. So um, that's, a, that's a good option for some people. It, it comes in Mylar bags, and that's a, that's a good option. But, uh, you know, wh where are you? Wh what's good for you? Uh, substituting out for other proteins. Um, you can get, like, textured animal, uh, uh, textured uh, vegetable protein. Um, Augustin Farms has some that uh, supposedly taste pretty good. I haven't really tried them out myself. I've gotten a couple, like a be bean burger and stuff like that. It, 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 you can make these burgers that don't quite taste like beef, but they, they, they give you the reminiscence of the idea that you're eating a burger. Uh, and it's a lot cheaper because it's not beef, right? Uh, eggs, uh, you can get freeze-dried eggs. Uh, you can get uh, canned meats. Um, and that's, uh, that's a good option there. That's where a lot of us are probably going to land. Um, or you can look at freeze-dried uh, beef. And that's, those are good ways to kind of deal with this crisis that's coming. Uh, if you see a good sale uh, of fresh beef out there, throw it in your freezer, right? If you have a canner and you have the time and you want to do that, uh, start uh, canning uh, that beef, right? That's a good option. Uh, if you don't have the time, uh, but you want to just make the problem go away, then you're, you're looking at canned meat or you're looking at freeze-dried beef. Um, but uh, this stuff is delicious. The freeze-dried stuff is. The canned stuff is pretty good, too. Um, it's, it's not the best, but, um, I mean, it, it tastes okay. The, the consistency of the canned uh, beef is, is what you'd expect from canned beef, right? So um, if you guys want to check out those things down below... Um, I'll put the, uh, the, 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 the deal on these things down there. Um, I've been buying up these things. Uh, it's uh, two packs for $10.50. Uh, the uh, prepper beef um, is, is a good deal uh, too, um, but uh, it, it is a little more expensive. Um, but uh, if you use the subscription, it brings the price down pretty, uh, pretty reasonable. All right, friends, uh, thanks so much for watching. Um, keep an eye on what's going on with the meat prices out there. I will keep an eye on them too. Um, stock up as best you can and get those deals now uh, because those deals probably will not exist in the future as we go forward. Thanks so much for watching. Steve Poplar of the Poplar Report, out.